Okay, it's time for us now to move on to our introduction to Terraform module. And in this module, we've got a number of lectures and demos to cover. To begin with, we have what is Terraform? Just explain what it is, how it's used, some of the key Terraform features. I do like to go through the traditional IT service request process so you can compare where Terraform fits today compared to the old way of executing on services. Look at the infrastructure's code way and then move on to a comparison between Terraform and other configuration management tools that you may have heard of, such as Puppet or Chef. We'll move on to Terraform use cases at the end before finally hitting a demo with Terraform in action so you can see how it all comes together and you can execute on a Terraform script in your environment. To begin with, let's take a look at what Terraform actually is. Well, first of all, Terraform is a tool for building, changing, and versioning infrastructure safely and efficiently in your environment. That's one of its big features, really, is that it's secure and efficient at its ability to work with multiple providers that are out there. It uses configuration files at the heart of everything to describe the components needed to run a single application or potentially your entire data center or across clouds, potentially deploying in AWS and Azure at the same time. Terraform generates an execution plan describing what it will do to reach the desired state, and then it executes it to build the described infrastructure. And this can manage low and high level components. As the configuration changes, Terraform is able to determine what changed and create incremental execution plans which can be applied. Those low-level components could include things such as compute instances, storage, networking, as well as high-level components such as DNS entries, SAS features, etc. If we look then at some of the key features of Terraform, the first and foremost, as you will hear throughout this course, is infrastructure as code. Infrastructure is described using the high-level configuration syntax, that's the Terraform language, and this allows a blueprint of your data center to be versioned and treated as you would any other code. Additionally, the infrastructure can be shared and reused. Then there are execution plans. Terraform has a planning step that you'll hear over and over again as well, where it generates an execution plan. The execution plan shows what Terraform will do when you call the apply command later on. This lets you avoid any surprises when Terraform goes out and starts to manipulate and change things in your environment. Thirdly, we've got a resource graph. Terraform builds a graph of all of your resources and paralyzes the creation and modification of any non-dependent resources. Because of this, Terraform builds infrastructure as efficiently as possible. An example of this might be if you deploy in two virtual machines that aren't dependent on each other. It can simply go ahead and build those in parallel. If, for example, we were building a database service that had to be up and running fully before the next service, maybe a VM or a PaaS service needed to be up and running, Terraform will understand that based on the resource graph it generates and the way you've described the infrastructure. Finally, we have change automation. Complex change sets can be applied to your infrastructure with minimal human interaction. You know, with the previously mentioned execution plan and resource graph, you know exactly what Terraform will change and in what order, avoiding many possible human errors as well. If we look now at the traditional IT service request process, just think about perhaps even in your own environment, and I encountered this a lot when I worked in the enterprise and still work with a lot of enterprise clients. Often a developer or another customer of IT puts in a request and it often feels like this. They pass in this piece of paper around between teams. It goes to the server team, to the networking team, you know, get an IP address back to the server team, configure something, you know, over to backup, over to monitoring, security's got to do some testing, perhaps with Qualys, things like that. Eventually getting everything back to the requester, perhaps the developer, so now they can do their testing and make sure the environment is how they want it to be. And this is ultimately the problem that tools like Terraform and cloud in general have tried to solve, is we want to eliminate these handoffs. That's not to say people can't be responsible for their own areas and set standards and things like that, but we want to eliminate as many of these handoffs and do it in a safe and secure way. And that's where the infrastructure's code way really, really shines, as we mentioned, because it's going to allow us to build this one document that says this is the state of the infrastructure. Everybody from those respective teams can help build this document. If the network team wants to control address space and you know IDS, IPS in conjunction with security, they can do that. But ultimately, at the end of it, when we want to deploy something, we have infrastructure as code as a single source of truth to say, this is how I want to declare my environment.
And that brings us on to some of the configuration management tools that you may already be thinking about, like Puppet and Chef, and how does Terraform compare? Well, if we look on the left-hand side, first of all, Terraform is focused on infrastructure automation. So this is virtual machine and cloud provisioning. By virtual machines, this could be on-premises in your VMware environment, or it could be in Azure, as we're obviously focused on in this course. It's declarative, just like configuration management tools, and we'll get more into the differences between procedural and declarative shortly, but it does have limited OS configuration management. Comparatively, if we look at Puppet and Chef, they're more focused on specific OS configurations. They do have other tools as well, like Chef has Habitat and Inspect and things like that. But for the most part, they're focused on OS configuration, application installation. They are declarative, just like Terraform. In fact, they came out first and Terraform sort of followed. But they do have limited infrastructure automation. So if we think about this on the right-hand side, when we're saying infrastructure automation for Puppet and Chef, that's really around that OS configuration and that part of the infrastructure and the application dependencies and installations. On the left-hand side, when we're looking at Terraform, we're really focused on the underlying infrastructure. Even in Azure, this could be all the infrastructure components around networking, storage, virtual machines that we want to set up. Terraform will take care of that. Think about it another way is Terraform will set up the virtual machine and all the infrastructure, then hand off to Puppet or Chef to do any additional installations if it's a IaaS virtual machine. But if it was just a PaaS service, Terraform would probably go ahead and provision those as well. Let's take a minute then just to compare procedural versus declarative. When we look at procedural, this is a series of steps. So for example, we could say connect to Azure in a script. Okay, go create my virtual machine, install Windows OS, configure my NIC settings, install software package A, install software package B, and it's really a series of steps that you've put in an order to execute on. Declarative, in contrast, is more like this. Give me a VM with the following, two CPUs, two gig of memory, this OS, this NIC with an IP, and perhaps a chef role for installing a SQL server. I'm not really going in and saying, you know, build the machine, install the OS, configure the NIC, you know, do all those kind of things. It's just doing that all for me. I'm just declaring, saying, give me this defined end state. You figure out how to get me there. Compared to the traditional way where if we did it all in PowerShell as an example, we did it via an API, we would have to go through a series of steps. And so there's a lot of benefits actually to both of these. Declarative is where Terraform really shines, but perhaps the end state is part of a series of procedural steps that's part of an orchestration workflow in Jenkins as an example. Let's take a look then at some Terraform use cases. Well, first and foremost, infrastructure deploy is the most common, and that could just be setting up network, storage, various infrastructure in the cloud, or a complete multi-tier application installation. In addition, Terraform can be used for self-service. It helps to tie it to a service catalog. This could be something that you may have in ServiceNow where you want to build a menu of services. That menu could then fire off a request to Terraform. Perhaps Terraform Enterprise could be used in this case. And then Terraform can go ahead and deploy the infrastructure based on that request input. In addition, it's great for software demos. This is something I use it for all the time. When I want to demo something in Azure in particular, I'll just fire up some Terraform you know, scripts that I've already got just to show people various things configured and you know, gets everything ready for demonstration. Great for disposable environments, as you'll see throughout these demos. When we want to destroy things at the end, far easier to do in Terraform. And finally, multi-cloud deployment, as we've kind of mentioned a few times. Perfect for Azure, as we're going to focus in this course. And you know, it's a fantastic cloud platform to deploy onto. But if you want to use other clouds as well, you can use the same language and actually deploy across multiple cloud environments. So with that, that's the intro for Terraform out the way, and then we'll move on to a quick demo next to show you what it looks like when you just go ahead and deploy something and see how easy it can be used.